What's up, class? And welcome to another lesson in the No Mod Shop class here on the School Zone. As you may be able to tell from my voice, I'm super duper sick. My throat was already getting sore when I made the last video and it turned into a full-blown cold this week. I hate being sick, but that's why my videos have been a little slim this last week or two. But since I'll be leaving town on the 21st to visit family for the holidays, I wanted to try and squeeze in a couple more videos before the end of the year. But what's a building topic I could cover without a lot of talking? I can't do the next one I had planned on the list because it's a pretty complex lesson. Then it dawned on me, a surprising amount of people have asked in the comments of the series and through email where I get all the supplies I use in my building, especially since I don't use mods. You know, if I had known this was going to be such a popular question, I probably would have made a video about it sooner and it would have been part of the green circle lessons. But hey, better late than never, right? And it's a video I can make without a lot of talking. Just a little setup here to start and then a whole lot of showing after that. And just a note for the veteran builders watching, you'd be surprised how many new people are still picking up Fallout 4 for the first time. Or, you know, beat the game a while back and just never got into settlement building but are now picking up that aspect of the game to stretch their skills. And you know what? That's awesome! The Fallout 4 building community rocks and we want to welcome all newcomers. Not just to the channel but to Fallout 4 in general. More Fallout 4 builders means a bigger community, the school zone grows, and even Bethesda gets more incentive for the Fallout 5 building system to be the best it can possibly be. So roll out that holiday welcome mat and you never know, even the veteran builders might just find a tip buried in the video that you could really use. But before we get to all that, it's time for another peek at this month's Wall of Fame. As you guys may have seen in some of my past videos, I feature the names of my supporters on Patreon once a month on this here Wall of Fame. And here are my fantastic Patreons this month. Thanks so much to all of you for helping me get a little closer to doing YouTube full time. So for the $5 tier, not only will you get access to the School Zone Patreon community, but you get to see the secret notes passed in class, get early access to special Let's Play videos, and you'll get your name featured on the Wall of Fame. I think that's a pretty good deal. Most importantly, you'll get me closer to doing YouTube full time, which is, you know, the only reason I can't put out daily videos. So think about jumping over to my Patreon page and helping to support the channel. Every time I reach a Patreon goal, that money will be reinvested into the channel to improve things like music or equipment, that sort of thing. And there are many cool perks you get as well. So let's get to it. Building supplies galore without mods. Four ways that I know of to do it. Number one, looting. If you watch my early gameplay walkthroughs, I picked up everything I could find. Not so much later in the game when I had the caps to spend, but in the beginning, looting is your friend. When you get back to your settlement, the junk can be divided into what you want to keep for decoration and what you want to put into your workshop to be converted into building supplies. No need to scrap the junk yourself. If you store in your workshop, it'll automatically get converted into materials needed as you build, which is also the reason why you want to sort out the stuff you want to keep for manual decoration. Because, for example, something as cool as McCree's toy soldier here will get scrapped for just a bit of ceramic and you'll lose it if you just store it in the workshop and then build something like a bathtub. I keep my decorations in a safe until I'm ready to start decorating the settlement at the end. Fortunately, settlers don't really steal junk like they steal weapons or power armor, so it should be safe. Number two, scrapping. If you have a bunch of cheap weapons and armor piling up in your workshop and you need some quick materials like wood or steel to finish up something before hassling with tip number three or four, then grab those guns and armor from your workshop, drop them, and then scrap them. The broken down components will automatically be added to your workshop building supplies. But be careful with this method though, because by doing this, you're also inadvertently doing the settlement size glitch, which I covered fully in a deep dive video. If you do this enough times, you'll forget how large your settlement might be getting and that could have an effect on your frame rate or even cause game crashes down the line. Check out that video for the details. Links in the description in the iCard above. I just wanted to mention that because scrapping items work similar to storing items for the purposes of the settlement size glitch. Number three, supply lines. I'm gonna give you the very brief version here because several other prominent YouTubers have already made elaborate videos about supply lines. No need for me to do a bunch of advertising for them because they're doing just fine. <laughs> just Google Fallout 4 supply lines and you'll be good to go. But here's the super skinny explanation. Find a settler you want to use to connect with another settlement, go into workshop mode, command them into supply lines mode, send them off to a settlement, done. 
That settler will now become a provisioner with a pet promen and then just run back and forth between those two settlements with the end result being that those two settlements are now instantly sharing all the crafting supplies. The provisioners can't technically die, but if you want to make their journey a little more pleasant, then arm them into the teeth because they will get into combats all over the commonwealth on their runs. Eventually, when you have enough settlements connected, they'll create sort of a supply chain between everyone connected. Now, like I said, this is just the skinny. Google those more elaborate videos if you want to learn more. But here's my favorite method. Number four, shipments. Once you have the caps to spend in the game, the preferred method to use is buying shipments from vendors. You search through their junk section for what you want, purchase the shipping order, put the receipt in your workshop, or you know, keep it on your person if you want, and then you're resupplied. This is the method I use all the time now that my character has the wherewithal to spend, and it's the method that Bethesda intended for you to use all along. Now, some of the supply shipments can be kind of expensive, so what I like to do is bring a bunch of stuff to trade, and then just make sure I'm wearing all my charisma boosting clothing. If I'm starting a brand new settlement, and I know I'll be buying shipments in bulk, then I usually munch on some great mentats to boost my charisma way up there and get the best deal. And you know, certain perks and magazines can help with that too. So, here's what I'm going to do for the rest of the video. I'm going to show you the best places to go to buy all the used building materials in the game. You know, not all vendors sell the same kinds of shipments, but these references should definitely help. And then I'll be back at the end of the video to wrap things up. everything, but none of it is scrap. Let's see what you got. Just don't call it junk. Let me know if you want some. Hey, Lucas, the best way to spend your caps is protecting your hide with my armor. That advice is free. Sure. Let's take a look. What you see is what you get. Hey, Rufus. How's it going? I'll take a look. Let me show you what I got. Shelby. Gotta keep stocked up on supplies, right? Sure. Let's take a look. Right away, boss. Take a look, sure. Remember, no returns, exchanges, or death threats. I have some work to do. Sorry. Now, don't be shy. You're never too old. Sure. Let's take a look. Genuine articles. See what you got. Just don't call it junk. I'll take a look. Let me show you what I got. Sure. 
take a look. Right away, boss. Supervisor Green. Sure. All right. I'll take a look. Sure. Remember, no returns, exchanges, or death threats. Looking to trade, or did you come here to admire the Commonwealth's largest collection of junk? That'd be great. Take a look, sure. Always happy to make a sale. Clothes make the person, right? situation sure let's take a look each weapon tested on someone who deserved it Isabel. In case I haven't said it enough, I really am sorry about this. I just want to trade. Sounds good to me. Excuse me. Hey, I got everything you field agent types need. Even a few Tinker Tom speciality aids. <laughs> Show me what you got. <clears throat> Take a look. We offer a wide variety of medical treatments. I need some supplies, Doctor. All right, but go easy on the camps.
All right, guys, thanks so much for tolerating my stuffy voice today. I can tell I'm on the mend, so that's good news. I only get sick about once every year and a half to two years, but when it happens, it usually lasts a week or two. Anyway, I hope this lesson was helpful. From what I know and the collective wisdom from the rest of the class and the After School Club, you should be able to refer back to this video whenever you need some more shipments and say your favorite vendor is out or maybe you're looking for that rare building material like circuitry or fiber optics. And you know, you can also keep the conversation going on my new subreddit as well. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this and a like and a share is always appreciated. See you in the next video. Happy building and don't get sick. <laughs> Thank you.